Hey y'all, it's me, your favorite Southern sweetheart and SC, Win Dixie, creator of Raven Dixie Line, the motorcycle entertainment and apparel company. Tonight, we are discussing dating in motorcycle clubs, what it's like to date as a PO of an outlaw club. We have a special guest joining us. Her name is Sox. She is out of Dallas, Texas. She is a former PO. And uh, we're going to be chatting up with her in just a couple of seconds. Thank you all for joining. We're going to dive right in. Okay, so we're going to call that um we're going to call socks from our Facebook and I'm going to give a little disclaimer to you guys. We will not be discussing Socks's former PO's club by name, okay? Um I'm not her former Outlaws club by name just for, you know, obvious reasons everything doesn't need to be like disclosed when it comes to to set things and we always respect the set on Raven Dixie line. All right, so I'm going to call Socks now. How's it going? It's going, oh my God, girl. That is so much better. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Oh, yay. That was such a good idea. Okay, so um, we're going to throw a picture of Socks up on the screen so you guys know what she looks like. She's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right, Socks. So I was just giving the guys, um, the Rebels, a bit of background on you that you are a former um, former PO of an outlaw club and that you wouldn't be disclosing the name of your former um, club, but you would be telling us about your experience dating as a PO of an outlaw and everything that that entails. Um, also, I want you all to know that Sox is speaking from her experience and her journey, and this is not um something that's going to resonate with with every PO or everyone's experience I take uh lessons from a local um uh 1% club in Tennessee and just my knowledge from what I've been taught is um sponsors have the total autonomy um to to do whatever they wish when it comes to their property. So this is um, this is Sox's experience. All right. So, all right, Sox, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. So I am Sox, of course, like she just introduced, and I live in Dallas. I'm originally from Denver. I've been um, in Dallas for about five years, and I'll be celebrating my 30th birthday in a couple of months, um, but I have been hanging out on the bike set for almost 10 years now. So my first experiences hanging out was like 19 years old, and um, I've experienced the Dallas bike set as well as the Dallas, um, Denver and Dallas bike sets. And so I have seen a lot. Um, I ride my own motorcycle. I ride a road glide and I ride a lot. So I've been to many different cities um, on my on my bike and seen and met people from all over the place, um, both in the outlaw world as well as the 99% world. So I have quite a bit of a journey that I've been on. Yes, and you were saying that you joined the the set when you were 19 years old. That's really young, and that was um, that was a decade ago. Um, let's go back. Let's go back to when you were 19 as a PO. What, what, why did you make the decision to join the motorcycle set? Well, 
Well, I was just hanging out initially for the first couple of years. So let me say that. Um, first couple of years, I was just hanging out. I didn't um, become a PO until a couple of years later. And it was just a family. Um, the organization I came from was and still is very much so my family. Uh, a lot of those guys and girls are you know, they can go lay in my bed and she'll cook on a meal and I don't have to be anywhere near like they are my family. And that is what I experienced hanging out for that amount of time prior to making that commitment. And, um, you know, just an unimaginable amount of love that I experienced, a lot of camaraderie, a lot of traditions that I saw. Um, it, it was just something that I felt like I, I wanted to be a part of. Okay, so what I hear from a lot of people that are not a part of the set and they don't really understand um, set protocol and, you know, what it, what an SC entails, what an MC entails, what PO entails. So, um, and, the, and people are really confused about property of, all right? So... Tell us why why did you choose to um, start there? So I chose to start there because even through all the misconceptions about property, um, I, I suppose just hanging out closely with the organization, I was able to dispel a lot of those myths and see firsthand what property of really meant and you know, in any avenue in life, as a woman, you're going to be treated how you carry yourself. And, oh, you know, people have horror stories, and I'm not saying that maybe that didn't happen to some people, that who knows what they had going on. But for me, I was treated with respect, and property of was not, um, in my eyes, something derogatory. It was it's more like these guys are proud to to be associated with these women. These guys are proud to say this is these are mine. You know, don't don't mess with these over here because if you do, <laughs> there's major consequences. These are these are my girls and, and not all property are, you know, girlfriends of, of their sponsors or of the guys in the in the clubs that they're in. Some property are sisters and mothers and aunts and cousins. And cousins, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so it's almost like um, <laughs> it's almost like sister wives, but um, I'm real close with some property and the way that a lot of uh, sponsors organize the the um, property that they that they it's almost like a team that they organize. Like one person has different strengths, right? And mm -hmm. then it just makes like a well rounded team but as a young lady at 19 years old or at this time you're in your early 20s obviously you're dating <laughs> obviously you're dating on the set um what did you experience as far as concerning dating as a PO? So say that maybe being a part of a, a an outlaw motorcycle club and I say a part of not a member of just to clarify an extension of an outlaw motorcycle club I got to see some guys and they're like raw form in, in in ways that maybe their families don't get to see them at their best and at their worst their highs and their lows and seeing them do things that I would be like, never would I ever want my husband to be doing that. Or or maybe, you know, that's a really good good guy over there, you know. Whatever the case may be, I got to see some of everything. So in some ways, I'm a little, I say, damaged because there's no pulling wool over my eyes in my day in life because I feel like I've seen it all. Oh, my brothers do some things. Um, but dating as a PO is extremely difficult because of those misconceptions and the the dark shadow that goes over the, the word property because a lot of people don't understand that. One thing that I didn't even realize until I was in the thick of it is that a lot of men in the outlaw motorcycle clubs don't even 
understand what property is. There are some places where maybe the, the region they're in, they don't really have any property up mm-hmm. or they just don't deal with them closely enough. So, uh, of course, most of the guys that are in outlaw motorcycle clubs came from 99% clubs. And, mm-hmm. you know, maybe early on in their journey, they have the same misconceptions of property that everyone else does. And so a lot of it was, you know, overcoming that negative connotation and getting that individual that you're dating to understand that maybe you're not like the stereotypical, um, what people think property is, that you're sleeping with everyone or, you know, and or that you're sleeping with your sponsor or, you know, yeah. Yeah. Right. So, you know, I, I was not, um, a personal property of anyone in particular. So, and that's a whole different conversation about the differences of levels of property of, yeah. um, not levels, they're all on the same level, but the different categories of property of. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So for me, my biggest struggle was just getting people to understand that I'm not just a free for all because there's property on my back. So whether it was someone I was dating within an organ within my organization or someone that knew nothing about motorcycle clubs, if they see that property of vest hanging in your closet, they're like, well, what is that? You know, and then you just have to go through that whole explanation. So for me, that was my main struggle. And, and then, you know, on that, on that side, you know, family is so important. Sisterhood and, and supporting your brotherhood is so prevalent. So it's like, if my brother calls at midnight, I'm going to answer the phone. Mm-hmm. If, you know, there's a sister in, in my city that, that's in need of assistance, I'm dropping what I'm doing and I'm going to her aid. And so a lot of people don't understand that. Um, and I don't even want to say people that are not a part of a motorcycle club. Because like I said, some people within the motorcycle club, you know, it's all fine and cool when you're not with them. And then the right. moment you're in a relationship with them, they don't want you doing those things anymore. They don't want you you know, having phone conversations with other brothers or, you know, laughing in public with other brothers or taking pictures. They don't like that anymore because now you're theirs and they don't want to share you. Oh my God, socks. Oh God. (laughs) Listen, girl, you have no idea what you, what you're saying right now and how much it's resonating to me. I'm going to interrupt you for just a second. Um, I made a... Yes, please do, because I'll talk forever. (laughs) I made an announcement on the first episode of this show that I was actually dating somebody, and I am dating somebody no longer. Um, I, uh... Yeah, I mean, it it sucks, but it it definitely is what it is, and I'm not going to divulge too much of that situation, because it is my personal experience, but it goes in to a lot of the things that you were saying about um, once you become somebody, you belong to them. And the things that you did previously um, is almost unacceptable as far as concerning is the camaraderie with the, the brotherhood. And the set is a huge part of my life and it's a huge part of my business. And I know a lot of people and a lot of people know me just for the simple fact of Raven Dixie line and having having a YouTube channel and being such a huge presence in social media in the MC world. So that's a hard pill to swallow. And even what you were saying about um, being around men so much, it's also made it difficult for you to, to date as well. Um, my mom passed away when I was 12 years old, like right before my 13th birthday. And I'm the baby of three. So, um, my sister was already, she was basically already grown. So it was me, my brother, my brother's in the middle and my dad living together from the age I was 12 until I went off to college when I was 17. But my dad, you know, he rode Harleys and, um, he had a couple of brothers and they rode Harleys. And I just remember growing up, being on the back of my dad's Harley, being in parking lots with a bunch of men all the time. Like, that was my life. So, I basically know how men are. You know, like, mm-hmm. I know the upside 
and the downside and it's really difficult to pull the wool over my eyes <laughs> and um that that's another that's another factor in like dating and and dating on the set and just just like dealing with men in general when you're around them so much you know i get that part so anyways um tell me when someone was approaching you to date you and we're going to discuss like if it was somebody on the set what procedure would they have to go through in order to um to pursue you could they just approach you just like come up to you and approach you or how how would that work Well, you know, some guys just really don't care. But the proper protocol is to go to her sponsor, find out whoever the PO sponsor is, and and ask for permission to have, you know, a conversation with them or to flirt with them or whatever that may look like. Um, you know, just in, in passing, it's okay to say hi. I, I know, like, I felt like when I didn't have my PO vest on, I had this whole different life because people felt comfortable talking to me. Whereas when I would have my PO vest on, they wouldn't. Yeah. And I mean, it's supposed to be that way. However, it's okay to say hi. Um, you know, if you know, you know that that property has a sponsor, you're supposed to go to their sponsor and address their sponsor in, in, ask for permission is what you're supposed to do for me being um in the organization that i was in a, a chapter property um you would need they would need to go to one of the brothers and ask them for permission to to pursue me that almost never happened maybe once but that almost never happens they just come straight to you and so as a property that respects your brotherhood you at that point make it known to your brother hey um this conversation took place how do you feel about this is this okay i had a great relation and still have a great relationship with all my brothers and and i always say they used to let me do things that maybe they would never let other properties do and, and some of my sisters kind of would <laughs> you know why does socks get to do this well i don't really know why but you know because i'm socks damn it don't ask no questions you know that's what i'm trying to say so at any rate, that would be the proper protocol to approach the, their brother. If you don't know who their sponsor is, just one of the brothers to, to find out. Um, but that almost never happened. Um, uh, you know, when I left the organization I was a part of, I was completely shocked how many guys, it was like I was fresh meat all over again on the set. They're like, hey, um, what happened? I don't see that you're, and I'm just like, whoa, calm down. Um, for myself, I, and I think maybe it's not a good thing. Maybe it is. I don't know. But I have a hard time taking guys on the set seriously. Like I have guys that may have been trying to talk to me forever. And I'm just like, as far as I'm concerned, this is a bike set. You just want one thing. I don't really care to give you the time of day. And yeah, my friend, I have so many that I will just throw in the friends on until I figure out the, their true intention because you really don't know. And that's so um, like difficult. That that's so difficult right. because it's like, what you talking about and why? You know, like, I, I really you know what do you want? And I'm at the point where I'm not so much jaded by it, but I just, I just don't have any, um, <sighs> energy <laughs> i don't have the the energy for it but i'm totally i mean i'm totally attracted to guys that ride motorcycles i'm totally attracted to um the culture you know i'm very much woven into the culture when it comes to that so i definitely don't see myself being with somebody that doesn't ride but um you know i don't know maybe i'll like marry chino braxton <laughs> or something like that, like the, the, the dirt bike rider, the stunt guy. But um, I, I don't know, like the, the set thing, it, it gets tiring. But I don't, um, I'm not like discouraging dating on the set or anything like that. I support whoever's decision 
for, for whatever reason. But like you said, you've been on the set for a decade. I've been on the set for damn near a decade. Um, it, it gets wearing no matter if you're a PO or an SC or, or, or an MC. You know, you just get to the point where it's like, huh. Oh. <laughs> right. Right. I actually don't discourage dating on the set either. I encourage discretion mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, just realistically, especially for women that ride, you know, guys don't really understand that. They don't. So if, if they're not riders themselves, and maybe they're not in a motorcycle club, but at least they ride a motorcycle, it makes it so much easier because mm -hmm. some of the things that <laughs> guys that don't ride say to women that ride are just ridiculous. And it's just like exhausting to even try and explain your lifestyle. They're so, almost so just easier. lame. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. <laughs> They're almost just lame, you know. I hate to put it out there, but I just, I'm always like, but do you ride? <laughs> you <know what? laughs> Listen, I'm going to tell you a brief story. Okay, go ahead. Real facts. This is true. I have met this guy, and I was riding this little fat boy at that point, and he thought I was cool. I thought he was cool. Mm -hmm. He said he wanted to go um, eat dinner and have drinks. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm on my bike today, just so you know. And he was like, okay, that's fine, because everyone thinks it's so hot in the pictures. They think, oh, that's so that's so sexy. You ride, y'all. That's, that's nice. I'd love to see a woman on the bike. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they don't really feel that way. They just think it in their head. So we go. We eat. He's like, I didn't really think you would still be on your bike by now. I'm like, no, I'm on my bike, like, all day. And he was like, okay. So we're getting ready to leave the restaurant. He said, like, you want to go have a drink? I'm like, sure. He was like, so you want to leave your bike here and, and hop in the car with me? <laughs> um, <laughs> that's a no for me, dog. Like, no. Um, I was like, but I'll, you know, I'm trying to be courteous. So I'll ride behind you, you know, because I didn't really know where we were going. I did not too long ago move to Dallas. So I was like, I'll ride behind you. And he was like all right, but next time you can't be on your bike because I ain't going to be following. You, you can ride in front, but I'm not going to be following you on your bike. So you're going to have to put your bike up when we go out. I oh, said, wow. Okay. Oh, wow. Honey, we got to the stoplight. You took a left? <laughs> he took a I right? I hit that throttle so hard all the way to the house and blocked the number because this is not going to work out. Yeah. There's nothing that you can do if you can't accept that I like to ride my motorcycle. Yeah. Yeah. I might be on my motorcycle for a week and never get in my car if that's what I choose to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like, explaining that to someone that doesn't understand, doesn't understand that passion, it, it's just, it doesn't happen. It so, doesn't. For me, I'm an advocate for dating on the set. I just wish that someone would, would use a little more discretion mm -hmm. with the things that they do. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And, like, it's almost like... And I try to convey this to my viewers that are not a part of the organization that you almost have to keep it private just because, um, especially if it's new, because you want to build a solid foundation with that person before you disclose to the public that you got something going on. Because the second it gets public, um, it, it, the it, people start chattering. It gets messy. It, it gets mm -hmm. it gets messy, and if you don't have that solid foundation, you're going to collapse. <laughs> you're going to collapse, and it and it's and it ha that happens, and it happens quite often, more often than not. So basically, get you a solid foundation before you go public. I know, I see, um, I see some of. Uh, my friends and they post like immediately when they start dating somebody and uh, and they're on the set and I'm like, oh, that is a disaster waiting to happen just because you've, you've invited in scrutiny and mm -hmm. that's I prefer to keep my relations off social media altogether. Yeah. If you know me, you'll know who I'm dating, mm -hmm. but it might be. You might go through my Facebook or my Instagram. You might have seen one person. <laughs> and 
ever. <laughs> and really, they're probably more my friend than anything. So yeah. I don't, yeah, no, that's not my thing. Social media and dating is the recipe for disaster. Absolutely. It's a whole different type of segment, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> well, yeah, almost, yeah. But the but same, like, I'm just not going to put it out there like that. The only person you're going to see me in a picture with if it's my significant other, is my fiancé or husband. It's going to be on that level before it's, like, anything out here in the general public. Um, but, yeah, so just to um, get ready to wrap everything up, I want to just tell everybody a, a little bit about you, Socks. I met Socks. I was interviewing an all-female MC that she was formerly a part of. I don't know if I'm spilling any tea, but Socks, no. is, Socks is recently <laughs> Socks is recently an indie writer. Now she's independent, and um, she has a project that she is pursuing, and I want you guys to support her wholeheartedly on it. She's a good girl, and um, she stood out to me immediately and uh that interview with that all-female MC will be coming up when we do the rebranding so you guys look forward to to seeing that and I'm gonna let Socks talk a little bit about what she's got going on and coming up go ahead Socks okay yay I'm so excited so as I mentioned earlier I will be turning 30 in a couple of months so January 9th I will also be um Putting out to the world my YouTube channel um, and my brand, which I'm so excited about because it's all about just being who you are, being free, doing what you want to do, um, living with no regrets. If you're whatever you're into, you know, do it like do you just be happy. So it's unapologetic and free. And I'm very excited about it. So that'll be coming January 9th. And you all can um, follow my my social media. I'll be putting that out um, so that everyone can take a look at it. And you can see my journey because I'm always on the highway going somewhere on my bike. I'm always meeting different people, experiencing different things. I travel a lot even apart from on my bike. So just different experiences I'll be able to share with everyone. All right, so we're going to be supporting Socks for sure on her journey. Uh, we're going to throw up on the screen um, all of her social media tags so you all can go follow her and keep up with what she's got going on. And as soon as she releases more information, I'll be sure to release that information to you all as well so we can support her on her YouTube journey just as you support Raven Dixie Line. Socks, I appreciate you calling in so much. And um, I wish you the best of luck on your journey. And all you Rebels, thank you all for joining for this episode of Dating in Motorcycle Clubs as a PO of an outlaw club. You all have the sweetest of the dreams, and I'll see you next time. Good night. <laughs>